and the mother of one of the two boys allegedly killed by a divisional police officer in Bauchi State over stolen chickens has said the lifeless body of her son was returned to her in a police van. The distressed mother, Hajara Ismail, who dis expressed her grief at the NUG Secretariat on how her son, Ibrahim, died, added that the policeman who brought the body claimed not to have been responsible for his death. The Relations Officer of the State Command, DSP Ahmed Wakili, in an interview, an interactive session with the journalist at the NUJ Secretariat, yesterday disclosed that the Commissioner of Police, Lawal Tanko Jimeta, has ordered a full investigation into the incident. Joining us live to discuss deaths and criminal impunity and the rule of law is Nekabari Anna. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, we're used to hearing of sad tales of human negligence, some of them, of course, ending in tragedy. How common is it for cases like these to be brought against the offenders? Well, the, the truth of the matter is, it is not too often. Not too often because patient relatives and some patients themselves who are fortunate to be alive after the acts of gross negligence often see acts of negligence as an act of God. And so you'll always hear them say things like, oh, leave it for God. It's the will of God. Who am I to question God? And very often we find that these situations do not occur well both for the patients, their relatives, the caregivers, and even for the healthcare sector in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But it's important to state that this situation is fast changing. We say it's fast changing because patients are becoming more and more aware of their rights. For example, in the United Kingdom, some of 3.42 billion pounds was spent last year alone paying compensation to patients who were victims of negligence in the United Kingdom. The same thing happened in Australia. We had some of 2.61 million Australian dollars was spent paying compensation. But what we have in Nigeria, people always feel that, oh, why take your case to court? The hospital is richer than you. The doctor is richer than you. You cannot fight him. The judicial system, the clog of the clog of the wheels of justice, the wheels of justice is so clogged that it doesn't move very fast. And so oftentimes, yes, cases of negligence are not reported. Okay, and, and um, I want to know how um, important or why you think it's important that we encourage a culture where negligence uh, that, of course, leads to maybe death sometimes is not only just reported but prosecuted. Because um, from what you mentioned earlier, there are cases where victims, families eventually let go of such a case. But should such a case be prosecuted regardless of what the victim's family feels? And how can we encourage a culture where negligence must be prosecuted? Thank you. If I can hear you clearly, you are trying to ask me how reporting these things and actually prosecuting them will help the system. Yes. There, there are so many things that not just reporting, but actually prosecuting negligence can do for the system. One of it is that it's going to make healthcare workers live up to the oaths they took on the day of their induction. For example, medical doctors. A medical doctor takes the Hippocratic oath. And one of the things he took in that oath is that he's going to do his best for the patient and he's not going to harm the patient. Now, in that kind of situation, where people suffer from acts of negligence but do not and do not take steps to challenge the negligent actions of doctors, we see that the doctors always have a field day. But what we are encouraging people to do is they should take active steps to prosecute acts of negligence against not just medical doctors but every healthcare worker. If acts of negligence are prosecuted, it will also create a sort of closure or bring comfort to victims of medical negligence. 